Greetings, programs. Welcome to Hydaelyn's Heroes, the Final Fantasy XIV podcast, where whether you're a warrior of light or a warrior of darkness, all are welcome on this star we call home. We're going to be talking about week one Prague and Final Fantasy XIV and Yoshi P and team, you know, changing up trials and dungeons. And mannequins here in the chat, greetings program to use as well. Uh, so we're going to dive into a few main story quests. Uh, but to join me, as always, my fellow co-host, he is the Eobard Thrawn to my Barry Allen, verse flash to flash. He is the Quadfather himself, Mr. Pierce Harvey. How you doing, sir? Thank you for specifying that it's flash to reverse flash, because, okay, I know who Barry Allen is, but I, I could not <laughs> recognize the name of reverse flash, so I appreciate you giving me that info, but... Uh, nice. <laughs> but no, uh, I'm, I'm doing good, man. It's been a, it's been a pretty pretty good week so far um almost cleared six yesterday feel like we'll probably do it on sunday so looking forward to that and uh and yeah so i'm 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 good to go man all right man uh yeah let's talk about our, our raid experience here though before we dive into our main quest uh we're, we're on six um we got the re-clear as as uh scuffed as that was on p5s god that was awful <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty bad. I think people just need more time in there to get the timings down for stuff. But sure. hopefully it just becomes easier and easier as the weeks go by. I think that's an inevitability. So, yeah, more time, more gear, because like, seriously, yeah, it's like the carbuncle hits like a fucking truck. I swear it sure God. does. <laughs> um, and there's yeah. just dots everywhere and just bad things happening all the time. It's just ah. but uh, I, I like the tier so far and P6 uh, S has actually been a lot of fun. Um, it's very methodical. Um, it's not as 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 hectic as P5S, especially when you have the reflex and, and all that fun stuff. But um, I'm liking most of the stuff in, in P6. How about yeah, you? for sure. I think it's, uh, I mean, it's definitely a, a much better fight than, than P2 was last year, I think. Oh, God. Um, the hippo? Yeah, Hippocampus was not as fun. I, I, I definitely like this fight a lot more. It, it is a lot more, it, like you said, I think it's a lot more methodical. Uh, it's, formulaic, there's the good word. It's I was formulaic, like. yes, that's a perfect word for it. It's very formulaic, but there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, yeah. It's good to have you know a fight like that every once in a while, and I'm really enjoying it, and it looks like the DPS check isn't too difficult, so uh, it's more just mastering those mechanics and, and getting those down. So I'm, I'm all for that kind of shit, so... <laughs> awesome blossom all right let's get into our main story quest how do we get those main story quests well we've been uh, thinking of them ourselves but we want to hear from you folks so if you send in an email to tarkoth gaming at gmail.com and leave an email uh you know with a comment or a question you can be part of the main story quest here on heidelands heroes all right and with that, let's start our main story quest with main quest number one. The world's first race has uh, the world first race has was decided a week ago, but it brought to light how tightly tuned this tier was, with top end raiders having to switch jobs just just to clear week one. This was with tombstone weapons available week one as well. How do you gentlemen feel about the situation? All right, Piers, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it to you first because uh, I one am not a person that cares too much about uh, parsing. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, the ultimate is to declare it. Awesome, that's all that matters to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got the clear, we got the loot. You know, the shiny weapon as glam is is the key at the end of any raid tier for me. So, uh, how do you feel about the the, the tuning? We'll, we'll start with you. I'll I'll give my thoughts though as well. It's 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 an interesting thing to discuss because I think ultimately I I am one of those fourteen players who believes that every comp should be able to clear every content no matter what. Uh, obviously, I do think that there are some there are some what's the word I'm looking for. Um, there are some comps that I believe are just a little too like like. Four dancers and two <laughs> dollars and two paladins or something might not should should probably not be able to clear everything, especially when the fight first comes out. But I think with this whole people having to change jobs in the final fight, I think that's I think that's pretty contentious, especially because yeah, like you said, we had a whole week to get tombstones, 
we had a whole week to pent to meld our gear. We had a whole week to, you know, the, the, we, we had an extra week of gear, basically, or, or you yeah. know, of tomes and all that. So, like, it's the fact that they've tuned the fight even harder um, is is pretty wild to me. So, I guess, for me personally, I, I don't like that, that uh, people were having to change their jobs in the final fight to be able to clear it. Um it just it, they haven't gear gated like that since the, the last time I remember them actually gear gating was back in like Gordius, and small, those fights to a smaller were... extent Midas too to a smaller extent, but okay, yeah Gordius yeah. was awful. I, I didn't follow yeah I didn't follow Midas as much as I did Gordius, uh, and I remember people complaining that Gordius was like almost impossible to do without uh, yeah. having another week or two of gear. So um, that's pretty crazy. Uh, I mean, at least certain comps are able to clear this tier. Yeah, but, you know, uh, I, I think the one we're all thinking about, Zeno having to change from Warrior, which is obviously his main, to a Gunbreaker, feels pretty bad. Yeah. So um, th that's kind of where I, I land on that. I, I hope they don't tune it that tight in the future. It's pretty funny because the fifth and sixth fight so far have had almost non-existent DPS checks. So it sounds like they turned the dial up pretty hard uh, in the next fight. So um, I, I'm not sure about seven, but yeah, obviously eight being pretty tight. I wonder how we're going to handle that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, it's a shame, but I mean, people are still able to clear it week one. So I guess that's all that really matters. Uh, but I guess we'll have to see in the future how they, they tune future fights and if they really make the dps check so hard that people are having to run meta comps and it's you know the another unfortunate part about it is it's also just going to push meta comps even more than they already are sure. uh and when meta comps get pushed some jobs start to get excluded like machinist and no one wants to see that happen so yeah. uh i hope that that's not <laughs> something that happens or poor that's machinist. not a consequence of uh yeah, poor machinists. I hope that's not a consequence of 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 the the DPS check being so tight this year. But yeah, that's that's pretty much where I stand on it. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to bring up some numbers here. Um, you know, I got FX logs here, and and this is also incorporating some of this week's clears as well. But we can kind of mm -hmm. see um, the disparity. Um, just and this is just for the tanks. The disparity between, I mean, these are all week one, week two clears so these are the top end raiders so they're putting forth you know the, the maximum efficiency that they can put out and we're seeing yeah. some you know look, we got dark knight here uh raging you know the top 20 from 6600 to 6760 gunbreaker gunbreaker putting out some work 6700 all the way up to almost 7000 so even just right there there's 200 dps between those two jobs, but Gunbreaker yeah. to Paladin. Uh, let's see, top 20, 6,300 mm -hmm. to almost 67. So there's like 200 DPS. Uh, and then Warriors, uh, where is that? 6,300 to 6,650, 6,660. So there is a disparity. Um, if you took a Paladin and a Warrior, you know, you're losing what 400 dps and then something like that's that. tuned yeah. pretty tight yeah. um I, I think they need to really get the jobs uh tighter uh, is maybe part of the issue i'm okay with gear gating as long as it's like it, it's like a hard gate you know this is kind of a soft gate where again it's it's about the comp where yeah if the comp is the best that you could possibly put out and you still can't get it, you know, you're a few deep, uh, hundred DPS off, you know, that's gear gating. This is meta comp. This is, you know, the job gating. Um, and that's, yes. that's unfortunate. Um, I, I hope that square can, you know, figure some stuff out here. Usually they've been pretty good at job balance, but for some reason, something's just off and maybe it's, it's the way they tuned it because of that extra week. And I'm hoping that maybe next year they find a little bit, bit of more of a rhythm and how to tune these things with that extra week. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, the job balance has been pretty strange lately. I, I'll agree with you there. Uh, I feel like there is too much of a disparity between, uh, at least between the tanks for sure. Uh, I haven't really looked at the healers. I know that 
melee DPS are a little lopsided with, I think, like, Ninja and Samurai really dominating and Reapers yes. falling yeah. short. And Which is sad, because um, it's the expansion's job, you know? Yeah. Or one of them. Uh, Fizz ranged. I mean, obviously, we don't have to discuss Machinists, but I feel like Bard and Dancer are okay. And for the casters, I think the casters are okay as well. I know that there's some Black Mages out there wish they could do more damage. I do feel like Black Mages should do a comparable damage to melee. And if that's being met, again, I haven't really checked, then that's fine by me. But, sure. um, you know, I think Summoner and Red Mage are about comparable, which is fine. So, uh, yeah, it's really just the tank balance and the melee balance. I think they got to they gotta nail down, I think. So, uh, hopefully they get that worked out. And hopefully, yeah, they figure out this whole... I mean, we don't even know they're doing a week between uh, Normal and Savage in 6.4, do we? I think this was like an experimental thing for just this tier. This is an experimental thing. You're right. Um, but I, I think that they should continue this. They just I need to work. You. I think they need to work their processes in tuning uh, to account for, you know, week one gear. I think they over tuned yeah. it just just a hair bit, unfortunately. Yeah, that's fair. And it's really, like like I said, it's just the last fight that seems to be really that overtuned. So yeah, it was all the, the it other was the fights, door DPS check is the, Yeah. Yeah, it was the P8S door boss that was giving oh, people is it the fits. door boss? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, uh, that's wild. Yeah. Uh, like you said, Xenos, he changed jobs from Warrior to Gunbreaker. Uh, got about 500 DPS increase just by changing. Um, they also had two damage downs and still managed to clean it. And he was just livid because... They cleared it because of that. So, um, I, again, I'm okay with with gear gating. I, I, you know, I I'm not one that's you know the elitist. I need to get it done week one. Uh, I, I take my time. You know, if we get a fight, one fight done every week, I'm okay with that. So, um, this yeah. doesn't affect me. I'm not the you know one percent of one percent. Um, oh so yeah, I, for sure. I, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the DPS check. It's the mechanics to me that, you know, leave the crazy mechanics to the ultimates. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's where I think they uh, have been. Um, everything seems to be okay in that regard. It's just mm. that DPS check is really, really strict. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. That's just kind of how it is, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fun, but. We're also not running a super meta comp either, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll see what happens. Well, thankfully, but... thankfully, our machinist went to Bard. <laughs> machinist did go to Bard, and and your Reaper. We're, um, we got I'm running Dragoon. Reaper, which is not which is not meta. The dragons are okay. We don't and have meta heal healers. We don't have meta healers. That's for sure. Because that would be Scholar and Astro, right? I don't know how Astros and Scholars are stacking up to the selfish healers. I'm not sure. Uh, don't quote me on that, but. I th like I said, I think the healer balance is not as lopsided as the other roles, sure. so I don't think it's as bad. But you know, I I am when we talk about selfish healers, like I think it's lopsided because I am tired of hearing healers are the most balanced by far. Okay, Kronos, I feel that healers, you know, I'm tired of hearing. Oh, I got an eighty-two thousand. Misery. And I'm like, okay, I'm happy to get my 30k Flegma. You know, that's sad. I, I yeah, want, I want big numbers. <laughs> you're also throwing out things like Flegma that aren't, that aren't, uh, they, I guess they are on the GCD, but they're, they're just like free high, high amounts of damage, right? Like you get, yeah, white they just don't really have that. They it's just, just put a up big glare, they put up, Yeah, they put up glare and then they get a misery every once in a while where you're like, you know, you get other things yeah, it's, like. It's uh, on 40 second cooldown, so. Yeah. It's not affected by my healing. All right. Yeah. Well, with that out of the way, we want to hear from you folks. Uh, drop a comment down below. Tell us what you think. Do you think that things are tuned too much? Do you like it as it is? Do you not care because rating is just stupid? Uh, drop a comment down below. Tell us what you think. All right. With that out of the way, let's move on to main quest number two. Main quest number two. During week one Prague, We've seen even more drama in this game. This includes the perception that a well-known content creator ditched his static, took all the loot, and abandoned his team. This seems horrid. Y'all's thoughts? All right, I'm going to start it off with this. Um, Can you lead, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm not one. I, I think this is a big nothing burger, but it, like it blew up on social media. Um, from all accounts, and I, again, this is all perception. From all accounts... 
it, it was all about expectations. The expectations that was laid out for this static was that they were going to get things done week one. Um, they put extra time in, you know, they organized time off, vacations, whatnot, um, and they were going to go hard week one. Unfortunately, there was some sort of emergency and they had to cut their week short. Um, they unfortunately funneled, or fortunately, you know, part of it is, you know, you funnel your gear to the best DPS in the group to lift that group up, you know, put that on their shoulders and lift that group up. So that that is a tactic to go with the gear. Um, that's not how our uh, static goes by it. Um, of course, we're not week one, so we divvy up the gear, we, we loot roll it, but we've been together for years. So we don't hop around from static to static every tier. That being said, I do feel that this is blown way out of proportion. Um, the expectations were not met. They weren't going to go anymore because of the emergency. So the person decided to look for other opportunities to clear the content week one, because that's what he wanted to do. That was the expectations that were laid out. I don't understand why someone or someone, you know, multiple people maybe got so butthurt that they needed to spam their grievances in social media, Reddit, Twitter, whatever it was, is absolutely freaking stupid. Um, so this isn't more of a, you know, I, I think what happened was fine because if the expectations aren't met, and, and it's not like he's he or she is not abandoning their group, they're gonna, they came back to help their group clear the next week. So they're not abandoning the group. The loot's not lost to that group. He just wanted to meet his goals, which was laid out to the team beforehand. So for me, this is all a, an issue with people's entitlement. And this is where that toxicity in 14 kind of rears its ugly head. Um, people really need to check themselves. I, I, it's a freaking video game for crying out loud. Uh, sure, sometimes think bad things can happen. That's not the case here. Um, I, I, people just need to calm the fuck down. I don't know what the fuck else to say about that. Um, but yeah, Piers, um, what do you think about this situation? Again, I think it's a big nothing burger. I, I think it's more of an issue of the toxicity of a 14 rear and its ugly head. And the toxicity, again, in my opinion, is a minority of the community, but it, it, it's sometimes the loudest. Yeah. Best community, by the way, final fantasy 14. And that's also a meme anyway. Um, what I will say, I, I think it all comes down to expectations. That ultimately, it all comes down to goals and expectations, period. Sure. Uh, when when I join a group, when I join a raid group, there is a certain level of expectations that are put down, and that should be agreed by all eight people, right? And for this, I, I, I'm not, I, I have not followed this situation pretty much at all. I've had to get filled in by other people, but the way I understand it, right, is basically how you explained it. Uh, if, if the plan was a week one clear, right? And the, the goals were not being made, as in, and what I mean by goals not being made, if there was an emergency where the group was not period going to run period for the rest of the week, and the week one was out of their hands, then I don't feel like it is disrespectful for some for multiple people from that group to go try to find another group to clear with for that week, if week one was their goal, and that's the goal that they set, and the group was unable, 100% unable, not through skill or not through anything else, just period because period, there was not going to be enough people to do that fight. So there's an emergency or something, then sure, you can go find another group to clear with. And if if the people that left to go find that week one clear came back and, and is still progging with the with the group that they were first with that funneled them that gear, I think that's fine. Uh, I know I've been in groups before back in like Delta Escape where if we didn't clear a fight for the week because we were just behind or we were taking our time, other people from our group would go get the clear in another, you know, sure. in another group. They would go party find it or whatever. And it was fine. Uh, it, it, it's it's a little frustrating when those people expect a certain level of progress when your group was strictly put out as mid-core, but that's another discussion altogether. Um <laughs> uh, It's their prerogative to go get a clear with another group. Um, as long as they come back and don't ghost their their initial group and they come back and they end up helping and and, and clearing i think it's fine um obviously uh, there's a whole another level of uh expectation and goal when it comes to content creators for final fantasy 14 um they 
kind of require that they get through all of the fights in a certain amount of time so that they can produce content on those fights and sure. when your livelihood is at stake when it comes to this kind of thing as in the amount of money that you make uh then i do feel like that's also something that needs to be taken into consideration when uh discussing this this topic because it's someone's livelihood and you, you you can't you can attack a lot of things about people a lot of people's character a lot of people's skill all that stuff don't attack someone's livelihood that is something that's kind of off limits i think in discussion when it comes to stuff like this so if it's really going to come down to that then I, I i can't really have any qualms with this person uh leaving their group temporarily to go find a clear uh for the week one um and from like you said, they're they're back helping their group now, Prague, and try to get their clear for the final fight. Um, it, then that's fine. Um, I, I think a lot of people, you know, it, when it comes to internet blood sports like this, right? A lot of people <laughs> just, a lot of people just take what they hear at face value, right? And a lot of people heard, oh, this person got funneled a bunch of gear and just ghosted their group and went to go find a clear in another group, which. I, I suppose is not the the instance that's not the case so you know a, a lot of people will just take what they hear at face value like i said and just run with it and they will post on r slash ffxiv or r slash ffxiv shit post or whatever that one's called and just or twitter slam. or you know instagram or yeah, twitter, whatever and they'll just slam the content creator or whoever it may be yeah. with, with with not really hearing both sides of the story um, I can't really, because I'm so de detached from this, this, and I don't really know the whole story. I can't really pass a whole lot of judgment on it, sure. but I guess I'll just defer back to what I said, where I, I just don't think it's, it's, it's that disrespectful for someone to go find a clear, um, in another group. If, if that group that they were initially in was 100% unable to continue for whatever reason, emergencies happen, that's, that's completely understandable. Uh, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Like you said, it's kind of a nothing burger. Uh, and it is just kind of people reacting to, to not having the whole situation, which is just the internet 120%. That's the internet for you. Yeah. Uh, people do not like to do their homework. They like to see something on Twitter or whatever, and they like to have a visceral reaction to it. And that's just kind of the way the world goes. So I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Uh, that's that's just trying to change the whole internet culture, and that's not something that happens overnight. So, good luck with that. But uh, <laughs> I mean, but yeah. That well, when we first heard about this, like we had kind of a private chat thing going on, and we we got pushed like a bunch of different memes. And initially, you know, I'm like, oh, these are funny, and I'm like, you know what? This really isn't funny. Like, th this is one side of a story. I know that there has to be the other side of the story. Um, because I really don't believe that especially a content creator is just going to fuck over his own livelihood just for a, a week long clear. Like if this, if this were to actually happen, if a person like it, it were to be such a piece of shit like this, this would could ruin them. Like I, yeah. I would think that people in this situation would be like, yeah, this isn't just about the game. This is my livelihood, like you said. So I knew there had to be another side of the story. Um, and I, I wasn't ready to pass judgment when I first saw all these memes and crap that were just being funneled to us. I'm like, okay, I need to take a step back and just like find out what's going on. Cause, and again, neither of us have talked to this individual directly. So this is all hearsay of hearsay, hearsay, <laughs> hearsay yeah. of hearsay of hearsay. So do your own research, you know, if you know uh, the person, feel free to talk to them if you're upset about it. But, you know, it, it's just stupid. Anything yeah, else you want it, to talk? Go ahead. It's pretty silly. Uh, I mean, like I said before, it all comes down to expectations. You know, I know people in real life, some of my good friends are in savage groups that are, they have a, a mindset where you cannot go into other fights without the group. Like for whatever reason, they want to experience all eight fresh and just go in all eight and prog the fight together. And they get really upset and butthurt if somebody else goes off and progs before them. And that's the group's prerogative. Look, if the, if the, if you sign up for that, you sign up for that. That's not how I like to roll things, but that's the group's expectation. So uh, all groups have different expectations and we can't, the, 
both Tark and I can't really attest to what what expectations and what what stuff was set in this group and what was not met and, and all that. Like that's that's in their personal Discord or whoever they got together and they were talking and and so I, I can't I can't really comment on that, but um if you just take of what what's happened at face value, uh, I just don't think it's a it's a huge deal. I don't think it's 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 something people need to freak out about. But everybody likes a good dump dumpster fire, right? Everybody likes to stop and watch at a car accident. People like all that stuff. So that's yeah. people love drama, man. Like that, it sells, dude. So like people have that visceral reaction. They like to go and on Twitter, they like to go on Reddit and just kind of voice their opinion and make funny memes haha so they can get cool internet points and all that stuff so um I, it's just that like i said that's just the way the internet works man so i don't think it's going to change anytime soon but yeah like you said it, it this is something that it would destroy his reputation worse than it already is if it was the truth right yeah. so I, you kind of also have to take that into account i don't think somebody would destroy the reputation that bad just so they could get a week one clear right like, it just doesn't make any sense so yeah. um yeah uh it happens in every fandom same shit goes on in wrestling right now with some high profile wrestlers of yeah course. yeah yeah there's that's that's a whole another side of of fandom coins i mean heck look at star wars you know and you know last jedi i love i i really like last jedi like i think it's a great story i love the direction that it went something completely different and then <laughs> but like people freaking dog that movie and then we got the rise of skywalker which is anyways yeah i think you're going to hell for liking the last jedi but that's just me personally um oh, <laughs> whatever <laughs> all right that's gonna wrap up this main quest uh we're gonna kick it over to you folks drop a comment down below tell us what you think uh do you think that this situation is just a big nothing burger like i think or and pierce links or is this just something that's irredeemable you have to stick with your group. If you join the group, you have to clear with them. Drop a comment down below. Tell us what you think. All right. With that main quest down, let's move on to main quest number three. Main quest number three. Yoshi P and team have been reworking MSQ dungeons and trials and incorporating duty support to help new players get through this early content without having to search for a party or sit in a long queue. This is an overall net positive, right? All right, Piers, we're gonna start with you on this one again. Sure. Um, Cause I saw the, the conversation you had in Discord and I'm like, hey, this could be a, a good uh, topic. Let's harvest it. <laughs> yes, I am a TLJ fan, okay? Get over it. Anyways, you there? P oh, did we lose Piers? No. Oh no. Technical technical difficulties. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Oh, there we go. There we go. Let me see. Yeah, that was I could hear you the you guys the whole time. So I don't think I lost all internet connection, but maybe it was just a brief blip or something. Am I all good? Yes, you seem to be all good now. Anyway, Jack, what I was good? saying is <laughs> Go ahead. What I was saying is you guys can if you like if you like all the Star Wars movies, more power to you. Okay, I'm not I don't hate any I can't hate on something that brings you happiness. I just have my own opinions on those set of movies. Okay, my I, son you know, like loves them. the Rise of Skywalker. I'm like, uh, just so gross. <laughs> There's cool stuff. There's lightsaber battle and palpy and lightning and stuff. Anyway, yeah, um, stuff that makes no sense. Anyways, no. Anyway, the, yeah, let's the get to the topic at hand. Yes. Okay. So the topic at hand. Yeah, we were having this discussion because it was it was noticed uh, by some of our raid members that some dungeons are completely different from the way they used to play. And this has been happening for a while now where they have been taking old dungeons, taking more of the outdated stuff and kind of bringing them into the, the more um, cookie cutter, I guess is the way I want to say it, even though that oh, has yeah. negative connotations. And I will, there, there's a reason I'm using the word cookie cutter because formulaic. I do not think it's a good thing. It's very formulaic. And I, I dislike that pretty viscerally. I don't like that. Um, as someone who obviously started back in 2.0, right? I started early access the first day you could hop on the servers when they were live on PlayStation 3. I was there, made my goofy looking midlander that I've never fantasied and put him in the Pugilist Guild and had a good time. So I've, I've been there since the beginning. I've experienced all this stuff, right? 
And as someone who's done that, as someone who's gone through those rite of patches, rite of passage dungeon dungeons like Brayflox, like um, like Stone Vigil, um, they haven't really done a lot to st the Orum Vale, but they have nerfed Orum Vale pretty hard. You know, some of those older dungeons that are just more unique, that were more challenging. Uh, dungeons like the Thousand Maws of Todorok, right, where there was different branching paths you could take, um, even though they all ultimately led to the same place, or they ultimately led to a sure. a chest at the end of the, this branch with a potion in the, in the chest. You <laughs> know? It was still an adventure, right? It still felt like it was an adventure when you're going through that dungeon for the first time, you're looking around, you're exploring, you know. I feel like that's there was a level of charm to all that. Sure. Um, and... Now it seems what they're doing is they're homogenizing everything, right? Now they are making, they made Todorok the same old wall-to-wall -wall dungeon pool with a boss. Wall-to-wall -wall dungeon pool with a boss. There's no more sure. of that. Uh, Brayflox is a lot of the same way. I was discussing this. Um, the, the, the pulls between the second lizard boss to the weird, uh, like, uh, what was it, like a gecko boss right where the yeah. dragon comes down halfway through that's all been homogenized where it's just a pull to pull a wall-to-wall -wall thing mm -hmm. um the final boss or, uh, number th th that weird lizard boss that used to imprison people in the bubbles and you used to have to free him yeah it's no longer a mechanic you got to deal with and now the final boss where it used to vomit down poison and you had to pull him out of the poison or it would regen completely gone now the mechanics are just he puts down little poison areas you got to dodge out of. He doesn't regen from that, and it's just, you know, he puts down these little pustules that pop, and you just got to not be near him. That's it, right? Yeah. I don't like that. And now all the, dun you know, the, the, that dungeon arena is a circle like all the other things, and it's it's just super-duper homogenized. And again, it all comes down to, I think, that they're they're making this easier for the trust system because I think a lot of these more unique mechanics or a lot of these weird branching path things wouldn't really fit with the whole trust or, or Dewey support system. Um, and you I think that's trying to code weird. that though. That, that'd be, it's, that's what I'm saying. I don't, <laughs> I, I, I think that kind of coding an AI to pull that dragon boss out of a poison puddle when there's like three or four of them on the field and just the, the, the process that would have to be done in, in the AI for them to understand where to put that boss, I think would just be too taxing. So I, I understand why they're doing it, but at the same time, I feel like there is a level of charm and a, and a level of rite of passageness, I guess, that's being taken away by them homogenizing all of these dungeons. So it's just unfortunate to see. And, um, you know, a, a new players just won't get to experience that, that old, weird dungeon experience that were from some of the older dungeons. But that's kind of where I land on this. But how do you feel about it, Tark? Well, you know, I'm... I'm okay with it because, you know, I experienced it and I'm, for all intents and purposes, done with it. You know, I, I'd like to make a new character at some point, but I've got so much to do on my main character. Like, I am that, that a second character is a freaking pipe dream for me. So, um, I, I have too much to do to worry about uh, a new character and, and re experiencing everything. Um, I will say when I queue up for a roulette and something's different like uh, when i went to copper bell uh that was different uh yeah it, it's it's a little jarring like oh well okay well this is interesting um i get a little weepy eyed with the nostalgia you know i i, I kind of miss those old things but you know then you look at the bosses like the slime boss in copper bell and you're like okay well this is definitely more of a boss and less of a sit around gimmick. with your thumb up your butt gimmick. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, so there, there are some good things about it. Um, I kind of want to experience the new thorn March. I heard it's mm. a lot more, you know, Rady esque. Uh, so that could be cool. Um, and I, I'd like to try out the new, um, steps of faith, but I'm not really keen on going into new game plus, uh, at least not right now. So, um, it, it, for me, it's, it's fine. Um, if it helps new players get into the game, um, and they don't have to wait around for cues. Awesome. Um, cause you know, I'm at the end. Uh, if I meet them in a queue, uh, if they want to do with other players, awesome. You know, hopefully we'll get to meet and play together. But otherwise, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. 
um, whatever makes the game more approachable, um, I think is, uh, again, a net positive in my mind. Yeah, is it a little sad that things are changing? I'm I'm a person that's had changed throughout his life, so I'm I'm fine with it. I, you know, I learned to adapt to things like this. So, mm-hmm. um, any other thoughts about uh, changes to dungeons or trials? Or... I think I think have you tried the new Thorn March. I have not tried the new Thorn March. I have heard it's actually pretty good, though. Uh, what was it? Fuji from our group said it was good. Okay. So it's definitely something I'm looking forward to. If I do get it in a trials roulette or a mental roulette or something, I'll definitely be excited to do that. Um, but like you said, I think you did nail it. Where it's it's ultimately it's a it's a net positive. I I do think this is a positive thing for the game, um, to make these more accessible for the trust system. I think the trust system is a positive. Um, but I, I I'll just harken back to what I said. There is a level of something that's lost from them homogenizing all these dungeons, and I, I there are some things I feel like that that it was unnecessary to change. I think something like. Um, like like Orm Vale, where the second oh, the boss cy- coin the counter, cy- they the have yeah, they, they've they've telegraphed all of the his his AOEs where they never used to be tele uh, telegraphed. I think there is actually something that players can learn and take away from that that you are now not you're depriving them of that experience by just signposting a lot of these things. Um, so. Uh, I think there are some changes that are a negative, but ultimately, overall, it is a positive. And obviously, rose-tinted glasses for me and Tark. Just unfortunate to see those things go, and we'll never be able to experience those things again, right? There's no option to go back and do old-school Todorok. It's just the way it is now. Uh, It's why I I have liked going into... When we know that there's going to be a trial that's going to just get completely wiped, something like... um, uh cape westwind and just <laughs> recently yeah. uh just recently um steps of faith uh there's always going to be a party the final day of the patch if you're looking for them look look at the final day of a patch see if you can find like a minimum item level um group to go in and experience those fights for the last time and just get get that last bit of of excitement out of it and then leave that patch fulfilled. I've done that, like I said, for way, for, for Cape Westwind and for uh, for Steps of Faith, and it felt really good. So as a nice final farewell to those. So if you know something is going to be changed and you think you're going to miss it at any point in the future, go experience it one last time and just get that fulfillment from it. But ultimately, uh, ultimately, it's good for the the the, the experience um, of sure. the new players to for for this this these changes to go through. It's a net positive. So that's where I'm at. Uh to bring up because you brought up a point where you know they changed the cyclops where his mechanics weren't telegraphed so mm-hmm. that made him a little bit challenging you had to you know read him and understand what he was doing and not just markers on the ground yeah. um again i'm i i feel kind of okay with it um i think yes there's an opportunity to teach players uh, about that because it does happen in the future especially with uh, raids uh, and extremes and savages. Um, yeah. But I think that they would need to be more consistent with that application because uh, mm, you have Orm Vale. And then I don't know the next time that happens. Uh, I think it's maybe uh, Skalik. Uh, final boss is Skalik. Um, he still has his. Oh, that guy. Yeah. yeah. He still has uh, moves that are not telegraphed. So you have to kind of see what he's doing. Um, some of them are telegraphed, but, uh, I, I think that that is a valid teaching tool. Um, especially if you're going to do those mechanics in end game content, um, but you need to be more consistent with it in its application. So again, with it not being really a thing, it's hard for me to say one way or another. Um, I, again, I, I miss, uh, original coin counter I, I felt he was pretty difficult um the most difficult of that dungeon uh except sure. well aside from the trash itself just being a complete pain in the ass but um, yeah that first room is still brutal to this day so <laughs> yeah they didn't change change that. there's no yeah, there's no duty change. support there so no need to change the layout <laughs> exactly exactly all right that is going to be it for main quest number three 
Tell us what you think down below. Uh, do you enjoy the changes to the dungeons and their incorporation in duty support? Or do you think they should leave well enough alone and everyone should fight through it as a rite of passage? Drop a comment down below. Tell us what you think. All right. With that down, we're we're done with our show. That That is it. Yeah, we'll do that. We all wrapped it up. Um, definitely wasn't last week for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I had a lot. I had a lot of fun last week. Last week was great. Um, I, I hope we can have more in-depth discussions like that. But uh, it's also nice to have you know shorter and more concise podcasts like this one. So yeah. Uh, so program note though, uh, there will be no Heidelands Heroes next week. Uh, things have been a little light. We had to kind of mm -hmm. dig this stuff up to to make a show for this week. Um, but we'll be back in two weeks uh, as we talk about Tokyo Game Show. And all the Final Fantasy goodness. This is, you know, 14 podcasts, but, you know, sometimes we want to talk about stuff a little bit outside that. So we're going to talk about that in two weeks. So I hope you join us then. Uh, but until then, Piers, where can people find you? Well, like uh, under my gorgeous face, XD, uh, you can find me at uh, radio underscore Piers on Twitch. Um, Still trying to determine what game I want to stream on Sundays. I think I've at least nailed down a day. It's probably oh, going to be good. Sundays. Progress. So it is progress. Uh, still trying to figure out what game I want to start with you guys. I, I have a lot of games that I do want to play, but unfortunately they're for other systems, and I don't quite have a capture card yet that I can get up and functioning. So I had to kind of my, my my library is limited to PlayStation Five, or, or I guess PlayStation Four since it's backwards compatible. So if you guys have any suggestions, let me know or let Tark know. Um, how about this? You give me a list of your games, and I will, you know, PS4, PS5, I'm guessing is the limitation, okay. right? Um, you give me a list of your games, and uh, I'll help you narrow some down. How about that? Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, but other other than that, um, hopefully you'll you'll see me streaming, but other than that, um, you can find me on Final Fantasy XIV, of course, uh, Piers Harvey on Leviathan, uh, the uh, Primal Data Center. Uh, always dicking around i've been spending a lot of time in ocean uh ocean resort what the what uh island sanctuary ocean <laughs> resort that's that's uh that's the next one that's coming out uh island sanctuary uh so i'm just minding my own business doing my own thing so i am completely free come by say hi uh let's do something together uh let's hang out get me away from island sanctuary and uh and yeah i would love to hear from you guys but uh where can people find you tark Oh, so many, so many ways you can find me. I'm on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all at Tarkov Gaming. If you play Final Fantasy 14 four days a week on Twitch, Tuesday through Friday, was a little bit uh, uh, absent this week due to illness, but I feel like I'm all better now. Uh, also stream on Mondays, Alternate Adventures, where we're finishing up Bloodborne probably this next Monday, I hope. Uh, and then we'll be off to Devil May Cry series. That's right. We're doing the entire series. We're going to start with one, go all the way through five. Uh, and that should be a hoot and a holler. Um, and then you can also find me on Ready Check Radio, uh, part, a, part of the Relic Grind, another Final Fantasy fourteen Square Enix podcast. Uh, and you can check that out, Ready Check Radio. That's R-A-I-D-E-O. Uh, and also stream there Saturdays and hopefully Sundays. I need to talk to the man, uh, Mr. Byrne, about uh, streaming on Sundays again. Um, but yeah, uh, that about does it for me. So, uh, uh, y'all, thank you all for joining. I uh, hope you had a good time. Uh, and until next time, y'all take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And remember, Master Control oversees all on the grid. End of line. See ya. Peace be with you.